Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll start chapter 12. Chapter 12 talks about lessons from the capital market history. Now make sure for this chapter, you, there's, there's some readings, make sure you, you complete your readings. But I'm going to do some calculations just to show you basically how to calculate what's called the dollar return and how to calculate the percentage return. And frankly, those are to a great degree basic concepts, but I'll have to explain them just to make sure I cover them. Um, I covered them. So basically, what what is the idea of this uh, of this uh, of this session? Okay, first we want to know what is our dollar return. So we have a dollar return, and we have a percentage return. So what is a dollar return? So I'll, I'll give you a simple example. Let's assume you bought an office building. You bought an office building, and let's assume you paid for it. That, that's your cost. Your cost equal to. Let's make it a million dollar. That's an office building. What did you do? You rented that building. You rented that building. So per year, per year, you generated one hundred thousand dollar in rental income. So year one, you earned one hundred thousand in rental income. Well, what does that translate into? Well, basically, we can say your 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 um, your rate of return for. for one thing you re you return the dollar amount is a hundred thousand. What is your rate of return? How much did you earn from that rate of return? Well, basically, you earned one hundred thousand dollar by investing a million dollar, which is equal to ten percent. So this is your uh, return, your rental rate of return. So you're earning ten percent from rental income. Now, also, let's make another assumption. So this is one thing. So a year later, you earned 100,000. Also, let's assume one year later, the value of this building, the value of this building, so the value of the, build, the office building went up because the value of the property went up. So the value, the market value is 1.2 million. Now, and let's assume also, let's assume you actually sold this building. You actually sold it. Well, after you earned the 100,000, you sold it for 1.2 million. So first of all, let's calculate your return on what's called the capital gain. The capital gain is the difference between how much you bought it and how much you sold it. Well, the building went up by $200,000 and you actually cashed out. Why? Because you, you bought it at a million, you sold it at at uh, 1.2 million. So basically, if what I can do is I take um, basically 1.2 million minus a million minus my cost divided by my original cost divided by a million. So this is let's call this the P0, P1 divided by P0. We're going to have different. Uh, term maybe, but I'm just saying this is this the original cost. This is the cost a year later. So you'll get two hundred thousand divided by a million, and that's going to give you a twenty percent return on capital gain. So you made a twenty percent return on capital gain, and also remember you made a twenty percent ten percent return on the rental on the rental income or $100,000 for our purposes, and you earned 20% on the capital gain, or $200,000. So if you ask me, what is your total return? Your total return is really 300000 300000 this is your total return, and on an investment of a million dollar, on an investment of a million dollar, Percentage wise, your total return is 30%. That's your total return. Now, for a stock, it works the same way. For a stock, the stock will generate not rental income, they will the stock will generate dividend income. So when we take the dividend divided by the original price, so if this is the dividend. We call this 10%. Hopefully you remember this. We learned this in the prior chapter. We call this dividend yield. And if you if you sold your stock for 1.2 million, you generated 20%. That's capital gain. 
So that's 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 the basic idea, and that's basically what Stuart dollar return and uh, and uh, and and percentage return. Maybe let's work an example. If there's an example here we can work. So this way you see just to consolidate this. Okay. So let's work an example just to consolidate what we just talked about. Suppose you bought some stock at the beginning of the year for $25. At the end of the year, the stock is $35. And during the year, it paid $2 in dividend. So the dividend is $2. You bought it at $25. So that's going to give you your dividend yield. So you invested $25. And as, as a return, you got $2. So your, your dividend yield, this is called dividend yield, is 8%. Also, the stock, remember, went from 25 up to 35. So the stock, the stock price went up $10. So if you take $10 divided by 25, 10 divided by 25, that's 40%. That's capital gain. Capital gain. Okay. So what is the dividend yield? Where do you find out it's 8%? What's the capital gain? It's 40%. The percentage return obviously is 48%. If your total investment was $1,000, how much would you have at the end of the year? Well, if, if my total investments is $1,000, and I'm going to multiply this by 1.48%, I will have $1,480. Not bad at all, 48%. So this is the dividend yield. This is the capital gain. This is the capital gain, and this is um, P, uh, uh, P one period from now, the price one period from now. This is the original price divided by the original price. Okay. So you invested $1,000, you'll have $1,480. And this is the basic idea. Well, this is a powerful idea. So remember, you need to know how to calculate the dollar return, and you need to know how to calculate the percentage return. Okay. If you have any questions, by all means, email me.